Thank you very much. I want to say, uh, first, I don't have any slides, so you're stuck just looking at me. Um, and to those who know me, Mary Beth and Jim, I'm not going to use the entirety of my allotted time because uh, I look forward to your, to your questions. So um, I want to say it's a, a pleasure to be invited to participate on this panel uh, to speak on the issue that I spend nearly all of my time discussing uh, and advocating on behalf of, which is public education. As president of the Student Assembly uh, and a trustee on the board, um, I represent the interests of more than 600,000 students across the State University of New York. These students are investing their time and their energy, an unfortunately large amount of money, in pursuit of setting themselves on a path toward the modern economy. I want to say first how great it is that higher education is taking a front row during the cycle. The fact that we're moving toward a discussion, that we're moving the debate, is, is outstanding. And higher education has traditionally been looked at as a luxury. We've all agreed for a while that every student has a right to a high school education and that providing a student with anything less is tantamount to accepting that child's inability to get a good paying job. But in 2017, for so many professions, an associate's or bachelor's degree is the new high school degree. We need to stop thinking of higher education as a luxury and start thinking of it as a necessity that everyone has a right to. Public higher education systems like SUNY are providing this necessity to students who otherwise would not be able to access it. We recognize that this plan does not alleviate the entirety of the debt crisis associated with public higher education, with any higher education. We appreciate that the $1.3 trillion in student debt in this country, which outweighs credit card debt and auto loan debt combined, comes from room and board and transportation and child care and fees and several other associated aspects of obtaining a higher education degree beyond just tuition. What's unique about this plan, though, is that it focuses on completion. It focuses on getting students through their degree as quickly as possible without sacrificing quality such that they can go on to get those high-paying jobs we were talking about before. Public higher education in New York State has a 500 percent return on investment per the SUNY Research Foundation. 500 percent. I don't know anything else that gives you a 500 percent return on investment like public higher education does. The primary driver of the economy, of economic recovery and economic success, is producing a stronger middle class, which is driven by public higher education. I don't want this discussion to become one about publics versus privates. We're all here in the spirit of higher learning, which is excellent. But there's been a lot of talk on the subject in the press and in discussions, and so I'll address it briefly here. New York State has invested more than $2.4 billion in private schools since 2011 and currently grants approximately 90,000 students the ability to attend private schools. New York invests more in private colleges than any other state except for one. We should also note that SUNY is the largest accreditor of charter schools in the state. We can appreciate that certain K-12 institutions are not very strong, and some could argue that that's why, chi why charter schools are necessary. But you can't compare SUNY to these programs. It's clear that public higher education can be as strong, as prestigious, if not more, than private institutions, uh, than competing private institutions. The State University of New York has some of the most renowned programs in the world. More than 20 schools have, uh, were named to US News and World Report's 2017 best colleges. You can look at Binghamton's Engineering School. You can look at Buffalo's Education School. Look at job placement rates of Albany's MBA program or of SUNY Maritime graduates. Look at other institutions from across the country, like UCLA and Berkeley. I'd venture to say that publics outperform privates in their respective states, especially when you look at the disparity in what you're paying. If we finally fund public higher education in our state, in New York, at the levels that they deserve, we would be successful in making the best even better. The, argue that the, the argument, rather, that the vast majority of students at private colleges receive subsidies, that, that it ends up being very comparable, very competitive when you add in those subsidies that they're getting is fine. But I think it's precisely for that reason that students at public schools that don't have those vast endowments should receive aid from programs like the Excelsior Scholarship. We realize, too, that this plan may lead to an increase in applications at SUNY and CUNY schools. And some may think that that could lead to an influx of students and we're going to open the floodgates. Professors aren't going to be able to effectively teach classes. Quality is going to tank. But you have to remember that enrollment standards are not going to be decreased. Students will still need to demonstrate academic excellence to gain admission into our world-class institutions. We look forward to this influx in students. More students will, of course, mean that more teaching faculty need to uphold the quality of higher education. But with those additional dollars, we'll be able to hire more teaching faculty. And we'll work with UUP to ensure that professors are paid what they deserve to be paid. 
it's critical that we realize that the Student Assembly supports this plan. We support this plan because of its leading to affordability and accessibility, but it isn't everything we want. We, of course, are going to continue to fight for child care funding and base aid for community colleges, for EOP and for TAP. But we're glad that this discussion is at the forefront of our minds. We're glad that we're finally moving a debate, that we're finally able to have this discussion and work with one another to make higher education in general in our state the very best that it can be. And so I would, I would say that it's critical that the second floor, the legislature, our elected officials, the privates and publics, and that every stakeholder involved, including students and student leaders on their respective campuses, are working together to make Excelsior as strong as it can be, to look critically at the program, to see how we can make it better in the future, but to not be upset that it's not everything that you want, but instead appreciate that we're getting more than we had in the past. And so with that, I look forward to questions and a dialogue uh, that will ensue after my good friend Mary Beth uh, Labate speaks. I think she has her own introduction. So thank you very much. Okay, so as Mark previewed, next is Mary Beth Labate. She's with the Commission on Independent College.